the Parable of the Vineyard Torah Portion Life Study. My name is Adam, your host. We know that the Most High has called a people out of slumber into belief in His Son, Messiah Yahusha, and to walk as He walked, obedient to the commandments. Join us as we study the Torah line by line so that we may fellowship together, grow, edify, train, and prepare the body of Messiah, the children of Israel, for the return of Messiah Yahusha to be with him forevermore. O Yahuwah, open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy Torah. And welcome back, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Parable of the Vineyard Torah Portion Live Studies. This is week 22 and 23. Uh, Vayakel and Pekude, which is he assembled and amounts of, as you notice, we've got two weeks today. Uh, that's sometimes how this works so that we can kind of stay on track and stay on schedule. Um, so basically going to go through Exodus 35, 1 uh, through 40, verse 38. So we're going to finish up with Exodus tonight. And um, I'm not happy about it. <laughs> I like Exodus. I really like Exodus. Uh, but not to say that there's not great stuff that we'll be finding out in Leviticus. Uh, and then it gets really interesting again in Numbers and then Deuteronomy, which is probably my favorite. But um, I don't know. Maybe Exodus might be my favorite. Just because the Exodus, the book of Exodus has so many parallels to where we're at now. I really believe that we're very similar to the Israelites uh, in Egypt, but we're now in end times Egypt, right? The the world financial power, the world military power. Um, so it is what it is. But anyways, so we are finishing Exodus tonight. And you know, a lot of this is kind of a, this Torah portion, both of these Torah portions are really kind of a a summary of stuff we've already talked about, already learned. So um, tonight, just this might be a short one. Uh, well, it may not be because it's actually a lot of reading. Um, but uh, I've got a few points I'd like to cover. But uh, like I said, a lot of this is just a recap of uh, the building of the tabernacle, building of the um, the menorah, the the ark. The ark. It's backwards. And what I'm looking at is backwards. So I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, the ark and uh, the other vessels and whatnot. But, uh, you know, hey, it's in the Torah, and it's here, and it's here for a reason, and it's in here, the Torah, twice for a reason. Uh, so Yahweh really wanted us to know about the building of the, um, um, all the goods, per se. And, uh, you know, I'm sure there's some excellent, excellent reflections, and we know that we are the temple. So maybe as we continue to go through this year by year, uh, if we've got that long, then we'll, we'll learn more and more about this. Because even like back in the day, like years ago, <clears throat> I used to like when I get to Matthew chapter one verse one. I'm like, I'm like, eh, am I just gonna skip to chapter two? Do I really need it to read all the begot, begot, begot? But but now, but the more that we read through like the Tanakh, we realize, oh, like we realize we recognize these names because like, oh yeah, he did this, or oh yeah, he did that, and it's like important. And uh, you know, obviously, if this stuff wouldn't have been written down, then we wouldn't have had it. So, anyways, let's uh, let's just w- want to mention one thing. You know, I am just a student of the Torah, and um, you know, so I invite you to be my study partner as we go through these Torah portions. And um, I just pray it's a blessing for both of us. So let's petition Yahuwah. Oh, Heavenly Father Yahuwah, we just uh, thank you for the ability to come together like this and to study your Torah. We just pray that you continue to open our eyes and ears to your truth, and uh, as the scripture says, to behold the wonderful things that are written out of your Torah. And let us not just be hearers of your of your Torah and your word, but be doers as well, because we know that those shall be justified. And we bless you in Yahusha's name, uh, to whom which every, all of our thanks uh, to be through him and his blood and his sacrifice for us on the stake. And just blessings to you, Abba. Hallelujah and Amen. All right, let's, uh, let's get to it, brothers and sisters. We've got a lot of reading to do, so let's get started. I hope your ears are ready because my, uh, my voice is ready. Let's do this. At least I think it is. 
And, uh, okay, we're going to start at Exodus 35, 1. And here we go. <clears throat> and Moshe gathered all the assembly of the children of Yahshua together and said unto them, These are the words which Yahuwah has commanded, that you should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be a to you a holy day, a Sabbath of rest to Yahuwah. Whosoever does work therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath. Now, this verse right here is a, um, there's a lot of contention about this. You know, uh, I really do believe that it goes together with verse 2 here, like this is all one, like one thought. And so I really do believe that this fire is about working. Back in those days, you know, almost every prof a lot of professions needed a fire, a working fire, uh, to actually do their their professions. Um, we're living in a day now where that's not as not as prevalent. But you know, a lot of people would be like, "Well, see, no fire means no cooking." But we, you know, we've talked about this before. There's definitely provisions in the Torah for cooking on Shabbat. We see it in Jubilees as well. It's like no work, no work, except for it's like Jubilees uh, chapter 50. I think it's verse eight. It's like no work except for what you need to prepare for each person to eat. We also saw that in um, Exodus 12, specifically for the Passover. Um, but there's definitely provisions for people to eat, and we know that Jubilees two says that the Sabbath is a day to eat and to drink, and to bless him who has created all things. And so um, I don't think that this fire is about cooking. I do believe it's about, um, you know, about uh, about working, specifically like working to earn a living. Because if we were to, if we were to say this is, you know, no fire, uh, you know, at all, I mean, so now we're talking about we can't read the word, you know, when it, and when it gets dark because they didn't have light bulbs they only had candlelight that's that's a light you know kindle no fire that's that's a fire you know uh what about uh, heating your home you know what about people that live in cold climates you know are we to shut off the the heat on sabbath and and get cold on that day you know at that point it just it kind of seems like that's where you know yahusha said the the sabbath was made for man and not man for the sabbath um, you know, this is a day. To, this is a feast day. This is a day to rejoice with Yahuwah, not a day to not look forward to. Because if I lived in the cold climate, which uh, I mean, I, I kind of do. I mean, it, it gets in sub freezing temperatures here. Um, if every Sabbath I had to turn off the heat, you know, I wouldn't look forward to Sabbath anymore. You know. So, anyways, I, I really believe that this is about uh, specifically about work, uh, work related fire. Uh, okay, so moving on. Exodus 35, 4. And Moshe spoke unto all the assembly of the children of Yashrael, saying, This is the thing with, with which Yahuwah commanded, saying, Take you from among you an offering unto Yahuwah. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it. An offering of Yahuwah, gold and silver and brass, and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen, and goat's hair, and ram skin dyed, dyed red, and badger skin, and shittim wood and oil for the light, and spices for anointing, and for the sweet incense, and onyx stones, and stones to be set for the ephod, for the breastplate, and every wise-hearted among you shall come, and make all that Yahuwah has commanded. So, you know, everybody pitched in. Everybody pitched in all their goods to make this happen, with a willing heart. The ta Verse 11, the tabernacle, his tent, and his covering, his tashes, and his boards, his bars, his pillars, and his sockets, the ark, and the staves thereof, with the mercy seat, the veil, the covering, the table, his staves, all his vessels, the showbread, but the menorah, right, the seven branch candlestick, also for the light, and for his furniture, and his lamps, and with oil for the light. And the incense altar, and his staves, and the anointing oil, the sweet incense, and the hanging for the door, the entering of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering, which his brazen grate, his staves, and all his vessels, the laver, and his foot. That's like the, I think that was like the washing basin. 
the hangings of the court pillar, the court, his pillars and their sockets, and the hanging for the door of the court, the pins of the tabernacle, and the pins of the court and their cords, the cloths of service to do service in the holy place, the holy garments for Aharon the priests, and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office. And all the assembly of the children of Yashrael departed from the presence of Moshe, and they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom his Ruach, the Spirit, made willing. And they brought Yahuwah's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the assembly, and for all his service, and for all, and for the holy garments. And they came, both men and women, as many as were willing-hearted, and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets, all jewels of gold, and every man that offered offered an offering of gold unto Yahuwah. And every man with whom was found blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and red skins of rams and badger skins brought them. Everyone that did offer an offering of silver and brass brought Yahuwah's offering, every man whom was found shittim wood for any work of the service, brought it. And all the women that were wise-hearted did spin with their hands, and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. This is all hard stuff hard to come by. And the women whose heart stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hair. And the rulers brought onyx stones, and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate and spice, and oil for the light, and for the anointing oil, for the sweet incense. The children of Yashrael brought a willing offering unto Yahuwah, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work which Yahuwah had commanded to be made by the hand of Moshe. And Moshe said unto the children of Yashrael, See, Yahuwah has called by name Betzalel, the son of Urai, the son of Horai, the tribe of Yehuda. And he has filled him with the Ruach Elohim and wisdom and understanding and in knowledge and all manner of workmanship and to devise curious works to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in the cutting of stones to set them and in carving of wood to make any manner of cunning work. And he has put in his heart that he may teach both he and Aholivav, the son of Ahimechak, the tribe of Dan. Then he has has he filled with the wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workman and of the embroiderer in blue and in purple and in scarlet and in fine linen and of the weaver even of them that do any work and of those that devise cunning work listen he put in the spirit in them to make these beautiful items remember all this stuff is all copies of what's in heaven so he was literally putting the ruach in men to be able to make a copy down here on earth of what of what's in heaven and that's amazing then wrought then wrought Betzalel and Aholivav and every wise hearted man in whom Yahuwah put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that Yahuwah had commanded. And Moshe called Betzalel and Aholivav and every wise hearted man in whose heart Yahuwah had put wisdom, even every one whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. And they received of Moshe all the offering which the children of Yashrael had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. And they spoke unto Moshe, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of work which Yahuwah had commanded to make. And Moshe gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary, so the people were restrained from bringing. For the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and too much. And every wise-hearted man among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twine linen, and blue and purple and scarlet, with cherubim of cunning work made he them. The length of one curtain was twenty and eight cubits, and the breadth of one certain four cubits. The curtains were all of one size. And he coupled the five curtains unto another, one unto another, and the other five curtains he coupled one unto another. And he made loops of blue on the edge of the curtain from the selvage in the coupling. Likewise, he made in the uttermost side of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops made he in one curtain, and fifty loops made he in the edge of the curtain, which was in the coupling of the second. The loops held one curtain to another. 
And he made fifty tatches of gold and coupled the curtains one unto another with the tatches. So it became one tabernacle. And he made curtains of goat's hair for the tent over the tabernacle. Eleven curtains he made them. The length of one curtain was thirty cubits, and four cubits. Four cubits was the breadth of one curtain. The eleven curtains were of one size, and he coupled the five curtains by themselves and the six curtains by themselves. He made fifty loops upon the uttermost edge of the curtain in the coupling, and fifty loops made he upon the edge of the curtain which couples in the second. And he made fifty tashes of brass to couple the tent together that it might be one. And he made a covering for the tents of ram skins dyed red and a covering of badger skins above that. And he made the boards for the tabernacle of Shittim wood standing up. The length of a board was ten cubits and the breadth of a board one cubit and a half. The board had two tenons, equally distant one from another. Thus did he make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And he made the boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side, side southward. And forty sockets of silver he made under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for his two tenons, and two sockets under another board for his two tenons. And another side of the tabernacle, which is toward the north corner, he made twenty boards. And there are forty sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. And for the sides of the tabernacle westward he made six boards. And two boards he made for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides. And they were coupled beneath and coupled together at the head thereof to one ring. Thus he did to both of them in both the corners. And there were eight boards, and their sockets were sixteen sockets of silver, under every board two sockets. And he made bars of shittim wood, five for the boards of one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle for the west sides, for the sides westward. And he made the middle bar to shoot through the boards from the one end to the other. And he overlaid the boards with gold and made their rings of gold to be places for the bars and overlaid the bars with gold. And he made a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen with cherubim made he it of cunning work. And he made there into four pillars of shittim wood and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold and he cast them for four sockets of silver. And he made a hanging for the tabernacle door of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen of needlework and the five pillars of it with their hooks. And he overlaid their chapters, chapters I'm sorry, and their fillets with gold, but their five sockets were of brass." And that's the making of the tabernacle. And now we're going to move on to the making of the ark in Exodus 37. And you guys get a decent visual while we're reading it. And Betzal El made the ark of Shittim wood. Two cubits and a half was the length of it, and a cubit and a half the breadth of it. A cubit and a half was the height of it. And he overlaid it with pure gold within and without, and made a crown of gold round to it about and he cast for it four rings of gold to be set by the four corners of it even two rings upon one side of it and two rings upon the other side and he made staves of shittim wood and overlaid them with gold and he put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark to bear the ark and he made the mercy seat of pure gold two cubits and a half was the length thereof and one cubit and a half the breadth thereof and he made two cherubim of gold beaten out of one piece made he them on the two ends of the mercy seat one cherub on the east oh, i'm sorry one cherub on the end of the si- of this side and another cherub on the other end of that side out of the mercy seat he made the cherubim on the two ends thereof And the cherubim spread out their wings on high and covered with their wings over the mercy seat with their faces one to another, even to the mercy seatward were their faces of the cherubim. Now it's the making of the table. And he made the table of shittim wood. Two cubits was the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And he overlaid it with pure gold and made thereunto a crown of gold round about it. Also he made thereunto a border of a handbreadth round about, and made a crown of gold for the border thereof round about. And he cast for it four rings of gold, and put the rings upon the four corners that were in the four feet thereof. Over against the border were the rings, the places for the staves to bear the table. 
and he made the staves of shittim wood and overlaid them with gold to bear the table. And he made the vessels which were upon the table, the dishes, the spoons, the bowls, his covers, covers to cover with all of pure gold. Making the lampstand. Once again, get a nice visual there too. And he made the menorah, the seven branch candlestick, of pure gold, of beaten work made he the menorah, his shaft and his branch, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers were of the same and six branches going out of the sides thereof, and three branches of the menorah out of the one side thereof, and three branches of the menorah out of the other side thereof, three bowls made after the fashion of almonds, and one branch, a knop and a flower, and three bowls made like almonds in another branch, a knop and a flower, so throughout the six branches going out of the menorah. And in the menorah were four bowls made like almonds, his knops and his flower flowers and a knop under the two branches of the same and a knop under the two branches of the same and a knop under the two branches of the same according to the six branches of uh, going out of it their knops and their branches were of the same all of it was a one beaten work of pure gold and he made his seven lamps and his snuffers and his snuff dishes of pure gold of a talent of pure gold made he it and all the vessels thereof now the altar of incense and he made the incense altar of shittim wood. The length of it was a cubit, and the breadth of it a cubit. It was four square, and two cubits was the height of it. The horns thereof were of the same. And he overlaid it with pure gold, both with the top of it and the sides thereof round about, and the horns of it. Also he made unto it a crown of gold round about. And he made two rings of gold for it under the crown thereof, by the two corners of it, upon the two sides thereof, to be places for the staves to bear it withal. And he made the staves of shittim wood and overlaid them with gold. And he made the holy anointing oil, the pure incense of sweet spices, according to the work of the apothecary. Again, all this stuff we talked about the last few weeks. So kind of just a, um, just another, another, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a reason Yahweh put it in this Torah twice. We've got some stuff to learn, apparently. Making the altar of burnt offering. And he made the altar of burnt offering of shittim wood. Five cubits was the length thereof, and five cubits the breadth, the breadth thereof. It was four square, and three cubits the height thereof. And he made the horns thereof on, f I'm sorry, and he made the horns thereof on the four corners of it. The horns were of the same, and he overlaid it with brass. And he made all the vessels of the altar with the pots and with the shovels, with the basins, with the flesh, uh, flesh hooks, and with the fire pans, all the vessels thereof he made of brass. And he made for the altar a brazen grate of network under the compass thereof beneath unto the midst of it. And he cast four rings for the four ends of the grate of brass to be places for the staves. And he made the staves of shittim wood and overlaid them with brass. And he put the staves into the rings on the sides of the altar to bear it withal. He made the altar hollow with boards. Now making the bronze basin. And he made the laver of brass, the foot of it a brass, and of the looking glasses of the women assembling, which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly making of the court and he made the court on the south side southwards hanging of the court were of fine twine linen a hundred cubits their pillars were 20 and their brazen sockets 20 the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver and for the north side the hangings were a hundred cubits their pillars were 20 and their sockets of brass 20 the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver and for the west side were hangings of fifty cubits, their pillars ten, and their sockets ten, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. And for the east side eastward fifty cubits, the hangings of the one side of the gate were fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. And for the other side of the court gate on this hand and on that hand were hanging of fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. All the hangings of the court round about were of fine twine linen, and the sockets for the pillars were of brass, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver, and the overlayings of their chapeteers of silver, and all the pillars of the court were filled with silver, filleted with silver. And the hanging for the gate of the court was needlework of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen, and twenty cubits was the length, and the height and the breadth was five cubits, answerable to the hangings of the court. 
and their pillars were four, and their sockets of brass four, their hooks of silver, and the overlaying of their chapiters, and their fillets of silver. And all the pins of the tabernacle and all the court round about were of brass. So materials for the tabernacle. Exodus 38, 21. This is the sum of the tabernacle, even of the tabernacle of the testimony, as it was counted according to the commandment of Moshe, for the service of the Levim, the Lev, Levaim, Levaim, the Levites, by the hand of Ithamar, son of Aharon, to the, the priest, and Betz, Betzalel, the son of Uri, the son of Horai, the son of Yehuda, made all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And with him was Aholivav, son of Ahimachak, of the tribe of Dan, and an engraver and a cunning workman, and an embroiderer in blue and in purple and in scarlet and fine linen. All the gold that was occupied for the work and all the work of the holy place, even the gold of, of the offering, was twenty and nine talents and seven hundred and thirty shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. And the sil silver of them that were numbered of the assembly was a hundred talents and a thousand seven hundred and three score and fifteen shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. And Becca for every man that is half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary for every one that went to be numbered from twenty years old and upward for six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty men. And of the hundred talents of silver were cast the sockets of the sanctuary and the sockets of the veil, a hundred sockets of the hundred talents, a talent for a socket. And of the thousand seven hundred and oh, I'm sorry, and of the thousand seven hundred seventy five shekels, he made hooks for the pillars and overlaid their chapiters and filleted them. And the brass of the offering was seventy talents and two thousand and four hundred shekels. And therewith he made the sockets to the door of the tabernacle of the assembly and the brazen altar and the brazen grate for it and all the vessels of the altar. And the sockets of the court round about and the sockets of the court gate and all the pins of the tabernacle and all the pins of the court round about. So now we're at chapter 39. And so we've got two more chapters left. And we're done with Exodus. I've got a little, a couple of things I want to read about here at the end of chapter 40. But for the most part, like I told you, brothers and sisters, this may be a short one because we're kind of just reading right through. Uh, Exodus 39.1. So this is the making of the priestly garments. And of the blue and purple and scarlet, they made cloths of service to do service in the holy place and make made the holy garments for Aharon as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he made the ephod of gold, blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen. And they did beat the gold into thin plates and cut it into wires to work it in the blue and the purple and in the scarlet and in the fine linen with cunning work. These are master, these are, I mean, these are just amazing crafters because they were given skill by Yahuwah. They made shoulder pieces for it to couple it together by the two edges was it coupled together and the belt of his ephod that was upon it was of the same according to the work thereof of gold blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen as Yahuwah commanded Moshe and they wrought onyx stones enclosed in ouches of gold graven as signets are graven with the names of the children of Yashrael and he put them on the shoulders of the ephod, that they should be stones for memorial to the children of Yashrael, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he made the breastplate of cunning work, like the work of the ephod, of gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen. I bet this is just a beautiful garment. I really do. These are some of my favorite colors. It was four square. They made the breastplate double. A span was the length thereof, and a span the breadth thereof, being doubled. And they set it in four rows of stones. The first row was a sardius, a topaz, and a carbuncle, which I believe that these were named for the order of birth, right, of the children of Israel. This was the first row. And the second row, an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a ligure, an agate, an amethyst. And the fourth row, a a, a barrel, an onyx, and a jasper. They were enclosed in ouches of gold in their enclosings. And the stones were according to the names of the children of Yashrael, twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, every one with his name according to the twelve tribes. And they made upon the breastplate chains at the ends of the wreathen work of gold. 
And they made two ouches of gold and two gold rings and put the two rings into in the two ends of the breastplate. And they put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings on the ends of the breastplate. And the two ends of the two wreathing chains they fastened in the two ouches and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it and they made two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate upon the border of it which was on the side of the ephod inward and they made two other golden rings and they put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath toward the fore part of it over against the other coupling thereof above the belt of the ephod and they did bind the breastplates by his rings unto the rings of the ephod with of lace of blue, that it might be above the belt of the ephod, that the breastplate might not be loosed from the ephod, as Yahweh commanded to Moshe. And he made the robe of the ephod of woven work of all blue. And there was a hole in the midst of, of, the, midst of the robe as the hole of a habergeon with a band round about the hole that it should not rend. And they made upon the hems of the robe pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet and twine linen. And they made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates upon the hem of the robe round about the pomegranates. And I'm sorry, a, a bell and a pomegranate ate a bell and a pomegranate found round about the hem of the robe to minister in as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And they made coats of fine linen of woven work for Aharon and for his sons and a turban of fine linen, and goodly bonnets of fine linen, and linen breeches of fine twined linen. And you can, so you can see here, so part of their, their dress, they've got uh, wool, but mostly linen, but they are mixing two fabrics. And I believe that's one of the reasons for that, uh, that law, you know, against mixing two fabrics, because that shit was reserved in a, in a force, in a kind of a, um, um, a leaning towards, the, the priests, and we know that Yahweh separated the priests from the people. He didn't want the people doing the same thing the priests were doing. Some people say it also has some uh, health benefits to not, uh, you know, mix fabrics. So, you know, sounds good. Um, okay. 29, and a belt of fine twine linen and a blue and a purple and scarlet of needlework as Yahweh commanded Moshe. And they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote upon it a writing like the engravings of a signet, Kodesh el Yahuwah, holiness to Yahuwah. And they tied unto it a lace of blue to fasten it on high upon the turban as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. Thus was all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of the assembly finished, and the children of Yashrael did according to all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe, so did they. And they brought the tabernacle unto El Moshe, the, the tent, his furniture, his tashes, his boards, his bars, and his pillars, and his sockets. And the covering of ram skins died, and the covering of badger skins, and the veil of the covering, the ark of the testimony, the staves thereof, and the mercy seat, the table, and all the vessels thereof, and the showbread, and the pure menorah, the seven branch candlestick, with the lamps thereof, even with the lamps to be set in order, and all the vessels thereof, and the oil for the light, and the golden altar, and the anointing oil, and the sweet incense, and the hanging for the tabernacle door, the brazen altar, his grate of brass, his staves, all his vessels, the laver, and his foot, the hangings of the court, uh, his pillars, his sockets, and the hanging of the four, I'm sorry, the hanging for the court gate, his cords and his pins, all the vessels of the service of the tabernacle for the tent of the assembly. The cloths of service to do service in the holy place, and the holy garments for Aharon the priest and his son's garments to minister in the priest's office. According to all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe, so the children of Yashrael made all the work. And Moshe did look up upon all the work, and behold, they had done it as Yahuwah commanded, even so they had done it, and Moshe blessed them. So, a lot of skilled labor, a lot of excellent, um, just, I don't know, I mean, I don't think these people could have done such an amazing job if the Ruach of Yahuwah was not in them. 
Just like a lot of us could not have come back to him unless he called us unto his son. And that we couldn't have been made right to him but through his son, Yahusha HaMashiach. So, all right, we're going to finish it up here. Exodus chapter 40, the tabernacle erected. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, On the first day of the first month you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of assembly. Now, I wonder if this has some prophetic meaning, you know, knowing that we're waiting for, that we are the tabernacle, but we also are waiting for New Jerusalem, to which we are like one with. I wonder if that's, you know, this is a foreshadow of the day when the tabernacle uh, will be set up. Just something interesting to think about. And you shall put therein the Ark of the Testimony and the cover and cover the ark with the veil, and you shall bring in the table and set it in order, set in order the things that are set to be in order upon it. And you shall bring the menorah and light the lamps thereof. And you shall set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony, and put the hanging of the door to the tabernacle. And you shall set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle, the tent of assembly. And you shall send, set the laver between the tent of the assembly and the altar, and should put water therein. And you shall set up the court round about and hang up the hanging at the court gate. <clears throat> and you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is therein, and shall hollow it, and all the vessels thereof, it shall be kodesh, set apart, holy. And you shall anoint the altar of the burnt offering and all his vessels, and sanctify the altar, and it shall be an altar most holy. And ye shall anoint the laver and his foot and sanctify it. And ye shall bring Aharon and his sons unto the door of the tabernacle and of the assembly and wash them with water. And ye shall put upon Aharon the holy garments and anoint him and sanctify him that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And ye shall bring his sons and clothe them with coats. And ye shall anoint them as you anointed their father that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. For their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. In the book of Baruch, it said that there would never fail to be um, a son of the law and a wise man unto the, the children of Yashrael. Thus did Moshe, according to all that Yahuwah commanded him, so did he. And it came to pass in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. Again, are we going to see our true tabernacle? Um, the Tabernacle of Elohim, as it's called in Revelation, uh, which is New Jerusalem. Are we going to see that uh, appear on the first day of the month? First day of the first month? Or the f first day of the first month of the second year? And Moshe read up the tabernacle and fastened the sockets and set up the boards thereof and put in the, ba the bars thereof and reared up the his pillars. And he spread abroad the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent above upon it, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he took and put the testimony into the ark and set the staves on the ark and put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the covering and covered the ark of the testimony, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he put the table in the tent of the assembly upon the side of the tabernacle northward without the veil. And he set the bread in order upon it before Yahuwah, as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe. And he put the menorah in the tent of the assembly over against the table on the side of the tabernacle southward. And he lighted the lamps before Yahuwah, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he put the golden altar in the tent of assembly before the veil. And he burnt sweet incense thereon, as Yahuwah commanded uh, Moshe. And he set up the hanging at the door of the tabernacle, and he put the altar of burnt offerings by the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the assembly, and offered upon it the burnt offering and the meat offerings as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he shall set the laver between the tent of the assembly and the altar, and put water there to wash it withal. And Moshe and Aharon and his sons washed their hands and their feet thereat, when they went into the tent of the assembly, and when they came near unto the altar, they washed as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. So we see here, right, they, they're not approaching Yahuwah in prayer or even to hear the word without them washing first. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle of the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moshe finished the work. 
Then this is the last couple of, uh, verses here, and we're done with Exodus, the glory of Yahuwah. Then a cloud covered the tent of the assembly, and the glory of Yahuwah filled the tabernacle. And Moshe was not able to enter into the tent of the assembly because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of Yahuwah filled the tabernacle. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Yashrael went onwards in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, then, then they journeyed not until the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of Yahuwah was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night, in the sight of all the house of Yashrael throughout all their journeys. And that is week 22 and week 23, brothers and sisters. Like I said, I know I, hadn't, I didn't have a lot of input in this one, but it is what it is. I'm not going to just make some stuff up just so it sounds good. Um, when I've got something regarding a scripture, I'm going to tell you. And when I don't, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and I just, you know, maybe I'm missing it right now. Maybe you all have a lot of wisdom in this area, and I'm just straight missing some of these connections. But again, this is a great opportunity to put that in the comment section so we can all grow, all grow together. But, brothers and sisters, uh, we're going to keep this one short tonight. We're going to do a uh, prayer. Actually, I'll just say shalom to the chat real quick. Who's in here? Sister Aaron James, of course. Brother Jared Hicks. Sister Camilla. Miriam. Gloria Caldwell, Christine Race, Judy Gonzalez, James Henry, uh, Windfeather. Hey, good to see you. A lot of, a lot of uh, everyone, people, a lot of same brothers and sisters returning every week. Good to see you all. Thankful Heart, uh, Morna, God's Clay. I like it. I like it. Joe Decker, Justin Walker. Good to see you all. Let's um, let's do a prayer. Real quick. Actually, before that, let's do the... No, let's pray for us, and then we'll do the Aharonic Blessing again. I'm going to end up singing this to you guys once I put a beat to it. I know there's a lot of songs out there. I just don't want to copy somebody. I want to pick up my own beat and sing you all. Uh, I want to sing it to you in English and in Hebrew. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But let's bow our hearts. Heavenly Father, Yahuwah Most High, we just come before you in Yahusha's name. And just thank you so much for this time that we could study together. We just pray that our eyes and ears continue to be opened, Abba, that we may grow, and our faith may be increased, and that we just fear nothing but you, Abba. Nothing. And I mean nothing. Abba, guide us as the world is seeming to turn up the heat. Abba, protect us. Protect your children. You always have. You always protect your children that love you and love your Torah. Abba, please watch over us and guide us. In Yahusha's name, I mean. Yahuwah bless you and keep you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Number 6, 24 through 26. Yevarecha Yahuwah, veyeshmerecha, yaer Yahuwah, pana velecha vechnuneka, yisa Yahuwah, pana velecha veyashem lecha, Shalom. All right, brothers and sisters. I pray that your Shabbat is peaceful, is blessed. I pray that you're able to eat and to drink and to bless him who has created all things. And I pray that you have some time in the word and that it is set apart unto Yahuwah Sebaoth. With that, brothers and sisters, I love you. And um, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. We'll see you next week in Leviticus. I sing to Yahuwah, for He is highly exalted. The horse and its rider He has thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song, and He has become my deliverance. He is my El, and I praise Him. Elohim of my Father And I exalt Him 
Yahuwah is a man of battle Yahuwah is his name He has cast Pharaoh's chariots And his army into the sea And his chosen officers are drowned in the sea of reeds The depths covered them They went down to the bottom like a stone Your right hand, O Yahuwah Has become great in power Your right hand, O Yahuwah Has crushed the enemy And in the greatness of your excellence You pulled down those who rose up against you You sent forth your wrath It consumed them like stubble And with the wind of your nostrils The waters were heaped up The floods stood like a wall The depths became stiff In the heart of the sea The enemy said I pursue, I overtake, I divide the spoil My being is satisfied on them I draw out my sword, my hand destroys them You blew with your wind, the sea covered them They sank like lead in the mighty waters Who is like you? Yahuwah, among the mighty ones Who is like you, great in Kodesha Awesome in praises, working wonders You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them In your kindness, you led the people whom you have redeemed In your strength you guided them to your Kodesh dwelling Peoples heard, they trembled Anguish gripped the inhabitants of Pelasheth Then the chiefs of Edom were troubled The mighty men of Moab Trembling grips them all the inhabitants of Canaan Melted. Fear and dread fell on them by the greatness of your arm They are as silent as a stone Until your people pass over, O oh, Yahuwah Until the people whom you have bought pass over You bring them in and plant them In the mountain of your inheritance In the place, O oh, Yahuwah Which you have made for your own dwelling The meek dash, O oh, Yahuwah Which your hands have prepared Yahuwah reigns forever And ever